I was introduced earlier, Ray Kemp. Uh, my role tonight is um, not so much to comment on these issues, but to help you in the audience engage with our distinguished panel here, including Dr. Barn, to uh, discuss the implications of uh, um, the uh, IARC uh, evaluation. Um, and I'll just briefly, if I may, introduce the, the panel to you. On your left, uh, my far right, so on the far left, we have um, Carl Magnus Larsen, the uh, CEO of uh, Arpanza. Um, in the middle, we have Lee Dayton, who's a science writer and um, a somewhat provocative um, coverer of uh, these issues in the Australian media. Um, and uh, on her left, on your right, Professor Malcolm Sim, um, Professor of Ed Epidemiology from Monash University here in Melbourne. Um, and uh, Malcolm, I think, participated as well in the, in the working group deliberations. Um, so before I open the, up the discussion to yourselves, I'd just like to invite the panel to, uh, to make um, a couple of observations to start with. Maybe I can start with you, Malcolm. I, uh, I assume you can confirm uh, Rob, uh, Rob, Robert's uh, uh, reporting of the, of the deliberations. And, and perhaps you could just give us a perspective you know, from someone involved of mm. you know, the amount of effort that requires and you know, how, how, uh, how taxing that process was. Well, could I say that uh, uh, it, I've been involved with a couple of these uh, monograph meetings now and they do involve a, a huge amount of work and, and Robert, I think, alluded to the, to the fact that behind each of these monographs there's a lot of preparatory work that, that needs to be done. There, there are four different uh, groups within the, within the monograph meeting. Each has their own designated area to, to work in. There's a lot of preparatory work that needs doing and it's a very intense uh, uh, 10 days or so uh, in Lyon, which is uh, working all day and then at night, even on weekends. And I know the epidemiology group uh, had to go in on the, on the Sunday as well, so it was 10 days straight. Uh, the, 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 the evidence isn't easy. There's a lot of uh, conflicting views about the, the strength of the evidence. And I know that there's, there was a lot of debate uh, in, the, uh, in the various groups that were meeting, especially the epidemiology group, uh, where I, I suppose the evidence is the most controversial. But I, I think what was remarkable is that the, there was a, a very large amount of agreement about the, the 2B classification at the end of the day. Uh, as Robert alluded, there was some uh, debate about the, uh, the, the question of whether it was limited or inadequate evidence for the epidemiological studies. But when it came down to the final classification, uh, a remarkable degree of agreement after such uh, intense debate over a, a long period of time. Uh, so uh, that, that, that's an in-house uh, perspective on the, on, on the deliberation as it came out at the end of the day. Can okay. I ask a Thank question you for that. in relationship to that? Because of course. I've always wanted to know, when you're in those meetings, how did it feel when you know, there was this group, what are they called here, the International EMF Alliance, and they were accusing you of being held captive by the mobile phone industry. Do you get annoyed? <laughs> Oh, I mean, we're too busy. I mean, really, really, <laughs> so I mean... just ignore the riffraff. Well, no, no, it's not riffraff. I mean, there's, there's a lot of comment and debate, and there certainly was here, because one of the members uh, was, went off the, off the working group just prior to the, to the meeting oh, really? starting because of, uh, there was a, a, an undeclared uh, conflict of interest. So oh, I see. That put, so that, that, in, that, in, in, that, that engendered a lot of, lot of debate. But really, when you're there, when you're going through the evidence, mm. um, we, we try not to get distracted by other things. Yeah. We're there to do a job, and, and that job's got to be done. Yeah. The IARC has uh, a policy of very carefully looking mm. at potential or apparent conflicts of interest mm. among the working group members uh, as participants in these working groups. Um, the IARC is very heavily scrutinized mm. for the policy that it follows to compile, to compose those working groups, and especially, of course, of course, in this type of uh, subject, uh, everyone was uh, looking at us, and we never did it right, and there were accusations before and during the meeting, and even after the meeting, that this or that expert should not have been there because of undeclared interests, links with industry, and things like that, on both uh, sides of the, of the spectrum. So I can say, uh, and maybe uh, Dr. Sim can confirm that, uh, that 
the working group that was finally present at the meeting was able to, to work uh, in an atmosphere of openness and difference of opinion, but convincing one or the other and leading to a consensus almost con unanimous. It was not completely unanimous, but there was consensus that the 2B classification for this type of data available at this moment is the, the best result that was scientifically reachable. And 2B means it is a possible carcinogen. We don't say that it causes it. It's, it's likely, it's possible that the use, intensive use of mobile telephones is at the basis of the uh, increased risk for this type of tumors. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Carl Magnus, uh, you know, as someone from the health authority side of things, looking at um, how to give guidance to people, would you like to just comment on the importance of being able to turn to something like the IARC report? <coughs> yes. Um, I was actually going to ask a question to begin with about uh, the uh, discussions that have been going on within the working group because one of the observations that one can make, of course, is that if you take a look at the Interphone study, for instance, and compare that also with the data from the Swedish study, uh, they are both suggestive of an association. Um, however, they are also very different. Uh, and it would be interesting just to hear a comment on how you address this issue of you have two studies or two sets of studies that point in the same direction, but they are also very different in what they uh, produce and the results that have been generated. Uh, so I guess it's something that strengthens the hypothesis if you have several studies pointing in the same direction, but they are also very different, as I said. Um, can I ask well, that first? Yes, no, that, that's fine, please. Um, Robert. Well, the, um there was a, mis a misunderstanding among the general public that IARC, the IARC working group this summer said something different from Interphone. And IARC, the IARC monographs are not Interphone. Interphone is not the IARC monographs. The working group this summer looked at 900 different publications, 60 epidemiological studies on brain cancer alone, and Interphone was an important study, but it was by far not the only study uh, that contributed to the evaluation. And it's not, uh, I don't want to give the impression, uh, and I'm sorry if I did, that in the end only Interphone and the Swedish studies counted. It was the overall view, the positive signals here and there from the uh, occupational exposure situations with all the biases and all the doubts, but the overall evaluation was that it, it justified the limited evidence of, for, from the epidemiology. Mm -hmm. And that brings us, well, almost by default to the 2B classification. So that was a basic meta-analysis uh, procedure you were using? Well, it was not a meta-analysis per se, but it was in fact looking at all the data together. The, and what is your what is the scientific weighing of that evidence and does that fall in the category limited or does it fall in the category inadequate do you find those studies overall inadequate to to say something or do you say well there is something there you cannot deny that there is something there but we don't know enough we don't know whether it's really a causal effect but had had we been con had the working group been convinced of that we we may have ended up in a 2A or, or a 1 classification. Yeah, I was just interested in the, in the protocol. The and there are, there are people, there were members of the working group who were convinced of their own studies, of their own results, and convinced that this is a cause of brain cancer. Yeah. But the weighing of the evidence, the arguments from one side and the other side, also, also the representative of uh, Dr. Hardell of the, of the Swedish studies, he was there. And he proposed a more uh, far-going uh, evaluation than the final result. But overall, in the discussions, he was convinced that this was, with this working group, 
the best results possible. That's interesting. So Lee. he wasn't a dissenter. No, no, he was not a dissenter. Not a dissenter. That's excellent. No, no. Lee, do you, do you think the media did um, that level of deli deliberation justice? Oh, well, no, <laughs> they can't. But it depends also on the, the media that we're talking about. Um, there's, of course, I mean, we have different kinds of media. There's electronic, there's print. Within the electronic, uh, there's, of course, radio and television and blogs. And you've got everything from the appalling to the very good. Um, so I think it's inappropriate to say the media did badly or the media did well. I think you have to target it into specifically what media. Now here in Australia, of course, the, the key focus would have been print and television. And television would have been largely ABC and maybe a couple of news spots. Print was a highly variable medium. And I brought two things that I wrote, as a matter of fact, to, to illustrate that. One was a piece I wrote about this study you, I mean, you can see every single glorious word here, um, for the news section of the Australian where I work. And this was a piece of total rubbish. It wasn't wrong, but it was based on a demand from the uh, chief of staff at the time, who is no longer the chief of staff, so nothing more to be said. You know, and in this instance, what was wanted was uh, Fundamentally, we have to go out and get a person, get a person's response to all of this. Whether the person is knowledgeable or not knowledgeable doesn't make any difference. So instead of having a proper story of what the findings were and what they meant, there's a whole middle section that's full of a woman talking about her, mobile, her child's mobile phone use. Um, in contrast, knowing that this was coming, because I edit the health section, so I have some control over that, though not universal, I was able to... Um, team up with a writer who works for the health section out of London, and he was able to um, be involved in real time and then send me comments. So we have comments from you that you may not even know about, and <laughs> uh, Bruce Armstrong, you know, a variety of people that he got comments from. So he sent them over, and we were able to write a piece. Well, I pulled it together, and it was a, a more sophisticated piece about what the process was. So completely different levels of sophistication within one outlet. So you can see that the answer is yes and no. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Carl Mangus, I should, should come back to you because we didn't actually close out. You, it was a good question, but I just wanted to, in a sense, there's an insight from, from your question itself, which is clearly an organization like our Panzer looks very carefully at um, working group reports from, from IARC but yeah. you, you seem to be implying that at the same time you have your own specialist knowledge, um, which you will also take into consideration. Yes, uh, our organization is uh, continuously actually reviewing the scientific literature that is coming out in uh, RF exposure mm -hmm. and RF effects. Uh, of course, that when major events happen, like for instance, the um, publication of the Interphone study and uh, now uh, with the classification from my arc, uh, we will also have to take a close look at what we have on our website and what the general advice is. Already a year ago, roughly, when the, um, um, actually more than a year ago, when the uh, Interphone study came out, we went through our advice and we rephrased it, but we didn't actually change it. We didn't change the meaning of it, so we maintained the, uh, the advice or the view that uh, we do not issue any general advice to the population in general to abstain from using mobile communication or mobile phones. We do advise the population that if there is concern and if people are concerned, there are ways that are very simple to avoid exposure. We also make the statement with regard to children that uh, we would recommend parents to take a look at their children's mobile phone use and uh, to the extent it's possible uh, suggest to the children that there are other means of using the mobile phone than actually uh, holding it to your head. And um, uh, we are not the uh, uh, experts in how you communicate with children. But I think that parents generally are experts in communicating with their children. It depends on the age of the child very often. Uh, so I have speaking to the parent of, of a teenager. Uh, yes. uh, and uh, 
but generally speaking, I think uh, parents are concerned with a lot of things that can happen to their children. And one of the things, uh, and in many cases, maybe they are actually helped by a mobile phone in order to this thing not happening to the children. So that, that is a discussion that you need. And I actually do have confidence here that uh, uh, parents generally would be the uh, best experts to communicating with their own children. But this is, of course, caused by the fact that we may have slowly developing uh, kinds of tumors and that we now have a, a generation that is growing up with a completely different mobile phone habits uh, than the people that are now my age or older. Uh, and they will have this exposure for a considerably longer time. So that is a, let's say, an, um, a um, precautionary approach that uh, we recommend in that case. And when we have looked at the classification, and the classification, of course, builds on science that was already there. Uh, it hasn't prompted, at this point in time, any revision, but there is an ongoing program all the time uh, within our organization to evaluate the science, and obviously this is one of the inputs to that discussion, and whether that will need to a revision uh, remains to be seen. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, it's a very, very uh, useful, useful evening. Could you please join me in the usual way in thanking the panel?